Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another special episode of Better Living. This is a show that seeks to make your life better by bringing you amazing advice, experts, and of course, just entertaining you and lifting you up. Today, we're focusing your mind on your money. We'll be speaking to a business entrepreneur and also speaking to one of our viewers who wrote to us about her business and how she wants to take it to next level. For right now, let me give you some business life hacks that I bet you didn't know. So as I said earlier today, we're focusing on entrepreneurship and keeping our minds on money. How do we make more of it? This morning, I'm very privileged and honored to be sitting with an entrepreneur, motivational speaker and business advisor, Josiah Otupa, who's got a great story of his own and also some advice for you. Tell us who is Josiah Otupa? Uh, Josiah Otupa, he's a great man. You know, Josiah, as a, as a name, comes from a king. Josiah was a great king in the kingdom of Israel kingdom. So, I'm a man who fears God, number one. And uh, I believe in uh, going and getting it. I don't believe in uh, sitting back and watching things. I'm a go-getter. I, I mean, I'm a guy who goes down and dirty my hands. I'm, I work hard for everything I do. So, I'm a man who, who believes in uh, getting things done right. And that's, that's my motto in life. Josiah, looking at your life, where did you get your entrepreneurial spirit from? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a fun story, you know, because uh, business entrepreneurial, it's, it's a fun thing. You know, it's something you do every day. I mean, you wake up to face new challenges. And um, for me, challenges is, is the funniest thing. I'm ready to face it. And I mean, when you conquer it, come out of it, you're like, hey, I did it. So each and every challenge comes in. I mean, if you know, business is all about managing money and managing resources and managing human capital managing people so it's huge i mean so i mean something as i mean uh, as we were discussing earlier is something i could see it in me because i believe business as i told you someone like jenga karume richard branson multi-billionaires billionaires in this country or around the world people you can name them i mean you can finish the list people who are really made in life are not really did it in school well in school so it's something I could see in me when I was young as, I mean, 10 year old, I mean, I could go back in the village on, out on the street and, uh, and hawk and uh, hawk uh, groundnuts and pee my, pee my in the, in the kijiko for shilling, for a shilling and uh, put in the sachets. And from there I grew up after school, back in the village, I became, I, still then I, I, from school I could go and hawk and be a hawker. So something I saw myself in me and uh, came, came back to Nairobi and picked, out, pick, picked up from uh, my former employer, right. and, uh, Jerry Shah, I remember, my, I mean, uh, image, image, image production. Mm -hmm. And picked up now the, the events, events part of his business. Okay. Yeah, where, where I'm now, yeah. Okay, so let, let's focus a little bit on millennials right now. Young people, it seems that they have everything at their fingertips. They are a, a global generation and they might seem to think that everything comes instantly. What kind of advice would you give to young people who are looking to start a business or looking to get into entrepreneurship? Uh, as you say, young people nowadays, I mean, they want to, they will see you driving a Range Rover and they want to have it. I mean, it's not possible. I mean, it's, it's, it's a journey. I always tell people, young people, you're not going to jump over from here to town. You want to get to town, you have to jump into your car and start driving and go along the way and get to town. So it's something you work out every day. You wake up every day. It's consistency. You wake up every day and, I mean, I remember when I was, I was talking about setting up an event company. You wake up every day and tell people, hey, you meet, I meet you, Kobe, and hey, Kobe, I do events. If you don't get something today, tomorrow wake up someone else, two people tell them, hey, I do events. If you get a chance, do your best and give, give your best. I mean, it grows from 1K to 2K. I remember I did gigs for 1K. I did gigs, gigs for 2K, 2K. I did something for 10K. So you grew up, you grew up pole pole to do things over, I've done productions worth, worth 20 million shillings. 30 million shillings, one job, yeah. So you step by step, pole pole, grow slowly, slowly, slowly. Nothing and nothing ever works overnight. Nothing whatsoever. Everything is, it grows. Even if plunder maze, it takes time. Even if you go back, I mean, the Bible stories, people, even if it's, it's what it is, you have to really go through rough times. Even men of God in the Bible went through rough times to get and achieve and tend to be the best people. Uh, we can definitely see that there's been development in the country and there have been amazing projects overtaken by the government. But 
reality and research shows that a lot of Kenyans don't see um, the effect on their pocket. This money hasn't trickled down. What can you say about that? Yeah, so first the policy, government policies. I mean, look, focusing into mega, mega, everything is mega. I mean, looking into power, looking into infrastructure, roads, looking into airports, looking into SGR. So and the government are not come back on the common manangi, chin grassroots, doing projects like Kibaki, Kenya Meat Commission, Kenya Nuts, uh, Vision 2030. I mean, looking into the grassroots, doing the projects that are, projects that are impacting the common man or shall go. As, I mean, because, you, know, you know, if you look at it, if, if the, 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 the wheel is going round, then money circulates, and then the corporate market, companies get money because everything that is, when money is reaches common man energy, then people are empowered. They can buy milk, they can buy sweets, they can buy commodities, mkate, maziwa, kwaduka. Then they who don't have money, they're not buying those commodities, so it affects the factories. So they shut down. If it affects universities, the universities closed the other day. The parents don't have money, they're not going to afford to pay school fees for their kids. So universities close. I mean, banks, they close, shut, shut down. Many institutions are shutting down because the wheel is not going round. The money is going back to China. We gave China to build a road, to build an airport. Chinese policies is cut, cut costs. You find a foreman sleeping in a tent and boiling rice. Whereas they could have empowering hotels and doing that and giving back and all that. So we have wrong partners in place to work with. Okay, so a, a lot of Kenyans, Josiah, uh, like to get into business without really kind of knowing how to go about it. What would you say about people who just get into business for, for getting into business sake? There's quail eggs, we follow quail eggs. Tenderpreneurship has become a thing. What would you say about that demographic? I think it's where we come from. I mean, we, we, we are Kenyans are fighters, we are fighting spirit. I mean, we've worked so we took the power from, 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 from the British government and then came now the people, the second generation that came to took power, to took power from, from, the, from the British, was the Asian community. But now when, when now Kibaki came back and we, the Kenyans grabbed the, 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 the power and we worked very hard. So, I mean, we are never, we are fighters, we are go-getters, Kenyans. That's the spirit who we are, that's who we are. I mean, you see, in Australia, Kenya, Kenya, Kenya became the first senator, black senator. It's you see America, America, story. Kenyans, I mean, all over the world. We, M-Pesa, I mean, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, 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 a good story. We've moved around the world. I mean, we turn around the world. I mean, many innovations. So if you come into business, I mean, look at East Africa. We are moving East Africa economy. Rwanda, Rwanda Stock Exchange, Rwanda by Kenyan, I mean, Uganda, Uganda, uh, service industry run by Kenyans, Tanzania still, um, schools, teachers in South Sudan. So we are, we are, we are the, I mean, I mean uh, go-getting spirit. We are, we are movers. Josiah, one of the things I can definitely say is a lot of people are fearful about getting into business. There's a, there's a fear that the business will fail. Uh, what can you say about that? And how did you particularly overcome this? How I overcame is, uh, I mean, for me, I would say it's in the blood, business is the blood. So it's, it, was, it, it is still difficult, a challenge I face even now. I mean, it's still, uh, you, I don't believe in, uh, I mean, settling down and being comfortable. So you always want to strive, strive and higher and higher. So it's a challenge, I mean, challenge of retaining the staff, paying the staff, retaining the clients, getting business, business and in events. Guys coming in, I mean, events is, is a, they become an everyone's business. Exactly. Everyone want to wake up tomorrow, want to do events. Like the Quillex story. Yeah, <laughs> so maintaining the clients, because they'll get a cheaper deal. I mean, you have to retain, sustain your, your standards of delivery at the higher price. There's someone who's offering a quarter of your price. So convincing that client to still keep you is the most difficult. But the day, your status, you know, go down, you have to still grow, you have to still invest millions of money in equipment. So it's something uh, you have to keep fighting every day, keep fighting every day. And uh, raising finances is not an easy thing. It's the most difficult, re reinvesting. 
when there's challenges. So going still, you say it's going back to the, going to the banks, convincing a bank to give you money with all the collateral is, is you say, milking from the stones. Yeah. So it's, it's a challenge every day, we face every day. But say resilience, we fighters and we, if it fails today, tomorrow you, do, you go back again and knock the door, and knock the door. And, that, and that's the point. Yeah. Keep trying. So you multiply from the 10 to 100 shillings you get, you push to invest it, and then you get 10k tomorrow, invest it, you don't eat it, eat a little bit, reinvest it, and then you grow again to 10, 100k, you reinvest it, right. eat a little bit. So grow, you grow slowly, slowly, and then get to meals of money. So don't wait for a huge amount. If you can get a million shillings, work with the 10k you have. Yeah, reinvest it. Don't buy the bigger, th bigger, bigger stock. Buy smaller stock. Start moving from smaller stock. I mean, if you have you have selling glasses, you wanted to buy a whole container. Start say, buying 10 boxes and start selling 10 bo from 10 boxes. If you move to 20, you move to slowly. A lot of people want a business. A lot of people want success, uh, but do, a lot of people are not willing to take a risk. What would you say about taking risks and why it's crucial to do it, especially in business? Before you succeed, I mean, before you succeed, you have to take a risk. You can never, ever, I mean, uh, succeed without going there and believing yourself and saying, hey, this can be done and it will be done. And in the spirit you have, you believe in yourself. I can do this, it can be done. Stepping out there, facing whoever it is, a corporate marketing manager, whoever it is, a client, you're selling, whatever you're selling, even if you're a hawker, you're selling the biggest idea on earth. Believe in yourself, say, hey, Kobe, I represent this company, I have this company, I can deliver for you, we can be partners in any capacity, I can deliver for you. Trust me with your product, trust me with your brand, Trust me, I will do this. So it's a speed. If you fail here again, take a risk tomorrow, reinvest in, take a flight. I remember at the time I was chasing a deal in Rwanda. I mean, you look into it, you have to invest in a flight, invest in accommodation, but you're not sure if you're going to get that deal. So it says I was on production, I remember when I was doing the first production ever done in Rwanda. So this client told me, hey, come, we have a, we, we talk and see. I mean, I invested in a border flight. I, got accommodation, but the first time I didn't get the deal. Yeah. yeah, I lost it. But I say, hey, okay, it's okay, it's gone, it's fine. I went there again, and this time around I got the deal. So you have to keep investing. Remember I have to take a flight to UK, going to meet clients. It doesn't really work out, but it's going to work. So you have to keep on taking risks in, 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 in believing yourself and pushing it each and every single day. Eventually it will work and consistency, consistency in business is consistency. Taking your passion into a fully fledged business for a lot of people in fashion, in beauty, in food, in anything, in the auto world, they find it very, very difficult. How, how do you scale up your business so that it's competing on a global scale? Yeah, I mean, the world has become a, a global village, I mean, internet. So, I mean, I want to talk, to, to look into who is Kobe, the first thing you give someone your card, first thing they're going to is log into your website, log into check on your Instagram, log into, I mean, whatever, Everything. Twitter, anything. Yeah. They want to check who it is. I mean, so profiling is key. Make sure that you were profiled. I mean, if in business, you have any business, no matter how small, you must appear online. I mean, that's why I set up one of my companies called Mobisoft uh, um, in Kenya. We are an IT company focusing on um, uh, programs and setting up websites and all that. So you have to have a proper profiling online. That's key, it's key, it's key. Everyone now, I mean, as I know now, America now drives on on uh, internet right. business, yeah. All these things everything. are you everything. You apply for a job, you go for an interview. Yeah, it's in. So it as a person, a as a business, individual, whatever you are, whatever you're doing, you must make sure that you work profiled online. Checking something you love, mm. your passion, and to, I mean, uh, a renowned global company, brand, product. I say it's, it's, uh, it's for me, it's so difficult, it's, 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 it's fun to do it because when you're growing something you have, when you're growing something you're born to do, it's fun. But again, it, challenges are there, yes. Uh, but uh, you will enjoy doing it. That's what 
it is because some people will divert and try and do while well, they'll fail, trying to multitask and start falling, chasing money. Yeah. But again, if you chase your passion, you can never fail. So it's, 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 you need to focus and get, be consistent, doing what you love and grow it slowly. The challenges will be there into financing, into managing human capital, into bringing people on board and sharing your idea and your dream. It's the most difficult to share your dream with people because they don't believe what you, you believe in. They don't believe, they, some people come there just for this payment, for salaries to be paid and get to buy your idea, believing in you and helping you grow it, grow up, grow, because it's something you believe in and you love doing. Right. So bringing someone else to buy your idea and believe in it and grow it is the most difficult because you can't do anything by yourself. Yeah, but growing something you love, it's, it's this thing. But the challenge is who to bring on board, someone to have people buying your idea and grow it into a multi-billion or the biggest brand and concept or whatever it is. All right, Josiah, we are going to take a very quick break, okay? We have some questions from our viewers at home. Guys, remember, all you have to do is log on to Better Living KE on our social media platforms. We are on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, Snapchat, we're everywhere, all right? Write to us, tell us some of your thoughts, tell us about your business as well, and we'll be happy to share some of these questions with our guests. For now, Josiah, we take a quick break. We'll be right back after this. Don't go anywhere. All right, everybody, welcome back. It's such a great morning. Today is a mind episode, focusing our mind on entrepreneurship and how to make more money. And after you make it, how to save it, how to invest it so that you can grow not only your family, but your business as well. All right, we have Josiah Otupa, who's here with us, advising us about how he did it himself and how those principles and tools have worked for his business. He's a great business advisor. Log on to social media platforms to connect to him. But I have a couple of questions from you at home. We start with Sam from Nairobi, who is asking Josiah about partnerships. A lot of people, including him, have been burnt by partners, how do you decide the right partner for your business? How do you walk that journey together? A partnership Kobe, is, is the most difficult thing. I mean, when you're starting up, I mean, because you're planting a seed. So this guy believes in something else, you believe in something else. So coming together, I mean, business partnership is the most difficult thing. I've tried when I was growing, I mean, I was growing my businesses. We fall, we fell off, fell off a million times with my partners. So I chose, hey, let me just do my own thing by myself. So what up works, each synergy works. When you're big, you're grown, you look in synergy coming together in partnership. I mean, you, you see what you're good in, I bring what I'm good in, and then we work together into a client. So that synergy works. Later the business, you can, but when it's starting, it is works. It needs the highest discipline. I mean, in terms of, in terms of if you're my partner, your strength is in finance, focus on finance. My, in my strength is networking, I focus on networking. And then probably we bring someone else to run the businesses, I mean run the businesses in operations. But it's the most difficult thing. It works at times if partners really acknowledge and focus and have one uh, vision of the, growing the company. You know, I'd like to add that you can actually do a background check. You've just alluded to that, that you can do a background check on this person. Um, the information is out there right now. I think that would be some good advice for Sam as well, right? A tweet works, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We have uh, Grace from Meru who wants to know about capital. Money is such a crucial conversation when it comes to starting a business. Um, talking, of course, about having no capital to start. You have a great idea, but you have no money. How do you start? Do you go to bank loans, sacos, chamas? Do you borrow from family? How do you go about it? How did you do it? I, I would agree that, uh, hey, Grace, I mean, you have an idea. I mean, uh, capital is not always important business, is the idea. Once I have a unique idea, money will always follow you. You do what you can do. You print business cards. It's like a thousand shillings, go print your business cards. Start telling people that, hey, um, I do this. Then if you're good in your, what you're doing, start the first project you get. No matter how small, start working on it. Deliver, do a good job. Deliver to the client. It's not about getting referrals. From that job, you can say, hey, I did this. See what I did? Now, I believe the same client trust me with a bigger challenge. You grow. To go to a different client, you, they will trust you. From their consistency and growing the business as grows. But don't look at money. Money is not always, you can make, we've made money. We've made money. But that's not always the important thing in the business. It's what you do and what you do every day. And every day that brings you up growth. So 
in business, you don't need money, you need the idea. All right, fantastic. And we have um, John from Nakuru also is, is wondering about bank loans and borrowing. That's such a huge thing for a lot of people who say they just don't have it. Where do they start? Try as much as possible, never borrow money. I mean, I've, I've tried that. I mean, uh, I mean, burn fingers in that. So try as much as possible. Start small. Don't go big. Start small. Start as you alone. Whatever it is, start small and grow big. Don't go big. If you go big, you go down. Don't start borrowing money from people and borrowing money from banks. These banks will kill you. I mean, you must have the muscles to muscle up with the banks. Otherwise, they'll bring you down. They'll auction you. So try as much as possible to not go for loans. Try start small. As I said, told you earlier, you have uh, 2,500 shillings. Go to a designer, make a logo, 2K, 3K, make a chip, go to a cafe, make a, make a logo, print the letterhead, print a, print, register a company, will do my center. You can go register a company the cheapest. I mean, the cheapest man, your own a business name, with a thousand shillings. Go another 500 shillings, print, print cards, go make a letterhead, and start selling your passion, start selling your idea from, from basics. Every day, tarmac, walk, meet people. I mean, it's all about networking, it's all about knowing people. I mean, business is with the people. Don't rush into the loans and all that. Start small, grow big, yeah. Thank you, Josiah, for some really crucial and great advice, okay? Now, I told you earlier that I have a surprise for you, right? Yeah. So I want you to come with me to a lady called Ellie who makes amazing food, she tells us, all right? She wants to take her passion and really get it to be a fully-fledged business. And I think you can help her with that. Are you up for it? I don't mind. I, I love food. Learn. I mean, yeah, uh, me being where I come from, we love food. <laughs> yes, yeah. fantastic. Okay. Yeah. As we do that, we want to make sure that you guys stay connected to this conversation. Money Woes is a segment that we have that really seeks to demystify this issue of finances and money. It's out there. We all want it. We don't know how to get it. Well, guess what? We'll give you some advice on that. Take a look at Money Woes. Thanks. Very nice. Thanks. All right, so this is Ellie's place. Mm -hmm. I think that's her over there. Hi, Ellie. How are you? Oh, what a beautiful house you have. Thank you. This is so lovely. Welcome. I think you've cooked for us. I can smell good food. <laughs> you know, yes. that's what we do on Better Living. We just love to eat. And good food, right? Yes, and good yes. food. Yes. Thank How you so much. Lovely, lovely home. Responding to my email. Yeah. Yay, thank yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so thank happy to have you. Thank you for inviting us. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How are you? Mm -hmm. I'm good. How are Hello, you? Hi. How are hi, you? Ellie. Josiah? Nice to meet yeah. you, Josiah. Yeah, thank you. Thank Great. you. Same Excellent. here. Thank, thank you. Very much. Beautiful food, I can see. Amazing. Yes. Looking. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Okay. All right, guys, so we're here at Ellie's place. She's all about clean eating, but keeping it tasty, all right? You want to know how she prepared this amazing feast? We've got breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. I'm eating everything. Please, trust me, all right? <laughs> Thank you for having us, Han. Absolutely. Just are you going to eat Thank with you. me? I will eat. For I sure. love food. All right, guys, so if you want to know how she prepared this meal, we do that courtesy of foodies, and then we take a quick break. We'll be right back. You really want to listen to this conversation in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back everybody. Yes, we are sitting in front of a feast as I said earlier and you guys watch the recipe that our beautiful Ellie just made for us. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Absolutely. All right, so I'm gonna get to eating, okay? And what I want Josiah to do is to take Ellie through how to turn this amazing, amazing talent that she has into revenue, into a fully fledged brand, like Martha Stewart, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Africa. Oh, yes. I can't Beyond wait. The I can't wait. Beyond the borders. Okay. I'm going to take my breakfast and run. Sure. And go eat in the corner. Please enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Josiah? Yeah? You are in very good hands. Ellie, you're in very good hands. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Enjoy, you guys. Thank you. Okay, cool. Ellie, hi. How are you? I'm good, Josiah. How are you? Awesome. Great. Um, nice coming here and seeing lovely food, although I want to eat. So how is it? What makes you, I mean, want to, to cook, I mean, cook in the kitchen? Why? It's a passion. Okay. Um, my mother was a good cook. I yeah. think she's transferred some of those good traits yeah. to me. Yeah. I've cooked since I was seven. I yeah. remember when I got a burn from tea. Yeah. Um, and so I've been creative with my meals. Yeah. And, um, now I'm doing clean, clean okay. eating. Awesome, awesome, beautiful. Yeah, so uh, why you want to turn into business? I mean, why just not make it for your family? Why, just want, why do you want to turn into business? Why, why, why business? 
like I said, I like to cook. So this is how it started. I am mm. a health person, so yeah. I work out on the regular. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I was working out with um, some two gentlemen mm. who I just would find in the gym every morning. Yeah. And we'd have these conversations okay. of, awesome. you know, awesome. after, after, after the workout, what do you eat? Mm. And these guys would tell me after the after their workers they'd go and eat chapati yeah. they'd go and eat mandazi I'm yeah. like you woke up at 5 to come to the gym why would you counteract all mm. that hard work mm. so they asked me what would you serve me oh, yes. okay. so that I continue with the health mm. that I've started I continue with this good stuff that I've started in the morning mm. so I started providing them with healthy meals they're yeah. still my okay. clients this is almost a year ago awesome. Awesome. Yes. so they'd get two meals from me and you could see it was like night and day there's their waist mm -hmm. just kept shrinking, shrinking, okay. shrinking. Okay. Okay. And um, I sh said sharing with my friends, and mm. now from my friends, my friends kept sharing with other friends. So now I've got an enough client base that I'm like, it's time to make it mm. a big viable business. Awesome. Yes. Good. Good stuff. So I mean. I mean, people are cooking everywhere. I mean, um, I know you're saying that I mean, you want to turn into a health eating, health lifestyle, health eating lifestyle. But I mean, I see that everywhere. I mean, people trying to do it. Mm -hmm. What makes you think that you're going to stand out and make it and grow into a big brand? Mm -hmm. What makes you think that, I mean, what do you have okay. that's different besides you say, hey, it's, um, everyone will say in the kitchen they're the best cooks. Everyone will tell, say that. So what makes you, you're going to stand out and have that consistency and stand out to be a big brand and uh, a biggest kitchen and the biggest place to go eat? Yeah, okay. why? What makes Number one, it's the ingredients. Number two is the technique of how I yeah. cook. Number three, it's um, the portions. Okay. You are right. Everybody can cook. And mm. you can walk down, you know, the road and find someone who will give you a meal. Yeah, yeah. But what you don't know is where they source their ingredients, mm. what they've put in so that it tastes good. People, you know, would put in sugar so that the, the food would taste better. That's added calories. Mm. They put in maybe too much salt yeah. or would put in a spice with words that you cannot yeah, pronounce. Yeah. Um, authentic, um, locally made product. I stick to natural herbs as much as I can mm. the thing that I use the most which is I call is my is my better evil yeah. is salt okay so I use very uh, regular ingredients that you can find with mm. your mama boga mm. you know so for example uh, in one of the plates I have um, chicken breast mm -hmm. I have rice and mm -hmm. I have broccoli and carrots okay awesome very little oil I use um, and that's why I said the, te the technique I use um, I saute a lot of my food mm. so it's not a lot of stews because the stews needs you to add extra things in yeah. it that you don't want and then I also yeah. keep the ingredients to a minimum. Mm. Um, the more the ingredients, the more than you're adding on calories mm. that are um, going to be something that you need to work mm. out on. So that's my differentiator. Okay. And then the quantities. You will find food, but people give you so much food. And remember when growing up, your mother said, finish that food? Mm -hmm. All of us yeah. have that little voice that says yeah. in your head, finish <laughs> that food. So you're full, but you keep stuffing yourself because you need to finish the food on your mm -hmm. plate. Mm -hmm. Your body needs to be able to digest your food as fast as possible so that it's effective. Mm -hmm. So little foods that are effective to keep your metabolism going. Okay. Awesome. So now it's different. It's no longer like a kitchen, no longer like your friends going to into a different world. It's going to be business. So what have you prepared to be in the business world? What have you prepared? What have you done? So one of the things I've done, because um, I'm not... Yet to prove, I'm not yet running a commercial kitchen, and my yeah. food is ordered, is 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 made on order. Mm. I'm not going to make food and anticipate that you will mm. come. You you call me or you send me an email with selected meal plan, mm. yeah. and then I m prepare the food for you. Yeah. That keeps my uh, cost cost low. So mm. you will find me on Facebook, yeah. where you can um, uh, click send me a message, find mm. a phone number you can call, then I'll share with you the menu, you pick the menu, yeah. you order, and then once on delivery, it gets to you on delivery, you pay me. Okay. So that's my scalable plan. But I'm open to ideas because okay. I know I'm now ready to expand to yeah. the next level. Yeah, because now you know, I mean, you supply, for example, any corporate company will call, hey, we want to supply, but remember the day, they want you to present an invoice. They want you to want to visit your website. They want to present a menu. So you have to have those stuff in order. You must be registered as a company. You must be able to have the documents for the company. I mean, accounting system in place. You must have an e-commerce site mm -hmm. where I'll come and pick the foods. Mm -hmm. And now pick the food. What I want, I can place, hey, can you supply me this breakfast? Mm -hmm. 
click on supply me this lunch, supply me this dinner, I click. So it's good to have a proper systems. I mean, it's a tech world now. Yes. You must be on Facebook, Instagram, on website, proper website. So those things must be in order. You want to make sure that you've registered your company, you have the scout system, you are on, on, the, on the, I mean, on net, mm -hmm. all cut across, all the elements are in order. I think that in a nutshell will make your business a succeed and a success and of course going into clans. Mm -hmm. Now you're opening up. Yes. Before you had 10 clans, you're going to have, you can have a boom and have 100 clans. Yes. So how do you handle that? I mean, the next month you're going to have a boom. How do you handle, handle that? Are you ready for the for the for the for the for that kind the of scalability? scalability yeah, sure. Absolutely. Um, so what I've also done in the background is I'm not trying to be a one man show. Mm. I have a team that I'm working with so that we're able to replicate the meals that I am making for everyone. So yeah. if I get a boom of people that I have a team that I can work with to replicate the meals and deliver it to you mm. as agreed. Mm. Um, for me, the experience with the food is important. Mm. That you know you ordered. Uh, brown rice, maybe with some grilled fish mm. and a certain vegetable, that that's what you get. Yeah, yeah. So my back end, and, and that took a, a while just to get, to train people mm. to get to the standard and also to have them think on the same mindset. So yeah. I think in that aspect, I am ready. But unless you test the waters, um, we'll know. Yeah, there's yes. all those challenges. Uh, yes. So it's fine. So, I mean, I'm happy for you. I'm Thank hoping you. to Thank visit you soon, uh, soon and see. I mean, how the growth, how it is, and uh, how far you've gone in business. I'm happy okay. for you. All the best. Thank you again for the advice. Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Definitely working towards getting all those things lined yeah. up. So I think Kobe should be joining us. Okay, soon. sure. Why? Yeah, yeah, Why? Yeah. Sure, sure. Hi, oh, okay. Hi. How did your talk go? Awesome, awesome, oh, great, awesome, great. awesome. Good I got advice. Some good advice. Yeah. Um, stuff that I should implement right away. Okay. Yes. Our food's great. It's healthy and it's delicious. I finished. Was it, how was it? The quantity? Amazing. The taste? Amazing. Awesome. Thank you, awesome. Ellie. Awesome. Thank you, Ellie. Awesome. All right, before we go, we have to introduce something fun and funny. Okay, here's a funny clip, everybody. Okay, thank you so much for having us oh, at your home, absolutely. Ellie. And Josiah, you've been nothing but a star. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank, thank you, you for much. your thank wonderful you advice. Much. He's great, isn't he? Yes, he is. He absolutely. Is sound advice. All right, so I can guarantee you one thing. This is not the last time you're going to see Josiah or Ellie on Better Living, okay? She's going to teach us more about cooking, healthy eating. You're going to give us a bunch of your recipes. Maybe even the secret ones. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So look out for that. If you are a foodie and you have recipes to share, please log on to our social media platforms. Better Living KE is where we live everywhere. Okay. We are on Facebook. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We are on Twitter. Please write to us. We'll be happy to share a lot of your stories and come to you as well. All right. And if you're looking for Josiah, his contacts are also on our social media platforms. We're going to hook you up with him. But we'll have him back on the show for his great advice. Thank you, guys. Thank you, too. Thank you very much. Thank All right, everyone have a great day okay and please just do something wonderful for yourself if not for anyone else do it today okay we'll see you right here tomorrow on better living have a good one bye